I played 86 days of Stardew Valley. Why did I play 86? Well, I completed the Community Center one year challenge on day 85. Which day is that? It's this one right here, the first of winter, well before the first year time limit. Technically, you can complete the challenge faster, but this is my story. The challenge has spanned over 5 months and 30 Let's Play episodes, and these are the highlights. I hope you enjoy the video, and if at some point, if I make you laugh, make you cry, jealous because of my astounding luck, drop a like, let me know in the comments, and consider subscribing because this video and challenge was a colossal project. Enjoy. Day 1 started just like any other playthrough, but I had a goal which was to complete the community center within one year of gameplay, and I needed a certain something that would help me out immensely in this endeavor. So after the initial setup on the farm, clear land, parsnips, and a chest, I needed to make myself a wooden sign. Every single day as I awoke to seize the day, I waltzed outside and this sign had my daily goals on it which helped give my day's purpose and also served as a visual guide to the viewers so they have an idea of what the day has in store for them as well. Afterwards, I set off on my first foraging journey to start collecting those spring forageables and got upset when Haley referred to me as a boy, when I'm clearly a man. I was graced with some decent luck with seven spring onions down south and looking for as many mixed seeds as I could find before heading home. As this was a classical run through, I knew which crops I'll need for the community center. And I bought exactly that. At the end of the night, I ended up with 39 crops planted, which was shooting for the stars apparently. As this was my first playthrough, I wasn't convinced about keeping this footage. And then this happened. Oh, no way. No way. <laughs> wow. Please go right in the middle. Please go, like, where's my mouse? I, I don't have a mouse. Okay. Please, please, stop, stop, stop. No. Yes, that's, that's amazing. That is so good. Wow. <laughs> yeah, after witnessing this, I decided to keep it. On day two, all my hard work had apparently paid off. Massively. All those parsnips from day one were good to go. I made sure to snowball that luck by replacing those parsnips. And as per the norm, I went to meet Willie and get his rod. Did you think I was going to say anything else? I quickly cast my line to catch the sardine for the community center, after which I packed up and went fishing at the lake because I wrongly believed this place was the best to fish in spring. Day 3, we were blessed with rain as is tradition in Stardew Valley. I crafted myself an early scarecrow thanks to that fairy. I then went to meet the residents, and so one of them had the guts to tell me to bugger off. Saddened, I fished my woes away that night. So sad that I accidentally exhausted myself. Ah, <sighs> moving on. Day 4, we were not blessed with rain. Bother. Luck was apparently my middle name in this playthrough because this night, I fished up a diamond which can go a long way in the early game. I mean, just listen how excited he is. Yes, yes! <laughs> I kept the diamond for now but was going to sell it anyways the next day. I was able to rake in 1400 gold this night regardless. We're in the money. Day 5, I was blessed with rain again. And even more rain on the horizon. So I was saving a lot of energy these early days. Luck strikes me again as my method to catching a catfish is by excavating it out of Gus's bin. That saved me a headache for sure for the community center. I made sure to celebrate by buying the bigger backpack right after. But not before getting absolutely blocked by Abigail. <sighs> Luckily for her, I still had to meet her. I expanded my crop field as I knew a lot of rain was coming so I could afford to do so. Today was the day I could finally go to the mines, but unlucky for me, I wasn't able to make it down the first 5 levels so there was no elevator for me. I will allow this disgrace by compromising it with that catfish. On day 6, I made sure to take all the wood I've gathered recently and fix that bridge at the beach for more beach foraging, and I was well rewarded. I then proceeded to make a fool of myself by digging through the trash in the presence of Penny. <laughs> After that debacle, I had to improve my social standing and went splunking even further. And this time, I redeemed myself. I was able to go down 5 levels, but got denied the 10th as I ran into a monster level. I also found a crab here for the community center which was really appreciated. 
And knowing I can't get down to level 10 because of time constraints, tech talk, I headed to my own beach and was lucky enough to catch the eel, which is also for the community center. Also looking at this, I've been able to fish up almost all the fish for the lake bundle. Go me! Day 7 was finally the day I could go ahead and unlock the community center, but before I did anything significant, I realized that Marnie had not dropped off the stray animal yet. My farm felt alone and quiet. I believe it was supposed to be a Friday that I adopt the pet, but it was raining Friday. Well, I went ahead and finally unlocked the CC, only two days late because of rain. I touched the stone and now I had to wait for the wizard to summon me. Next, I tried to bribe the mayor with a flower. It kind of worked, I got 100 gold for a quest, so I will take this as a win. Before being summoned like a hound the next day, I visit the museum for the first time and donate 5 items so I could get 9 free cauliflowers for my generosity. Day 8. As I touched the pedestal yesterday, I made sure to visit the wizard. Knowing this, if you watch the entire wizard scene and drink his potion, it will give you some energy back. Now I accidentally skipped it and was about to flip my table. Energy back and that did I just skip it? Oh my god. <laughs> With much rage and enthusiasm, I rushed to the community center and made my first donations. Spring foraging is done and 30 spring seeds are mine. I also donated any fish I have so far for the fish tank. This section can be annoying because certain fish only pop up at certain times. Plan ahead folks. I then celebrated our first donations with some mining and disclosed my goal for spring is to reach level 80 in the mines. Yeah, my lack of energy items is apparent at this point as I was reduced to blowing this place up to get down 5 levels. Uh, semi success? Day 9 was one that truly defined my luck as a farmer. We already had rain, been having a lot of rain so far and I made the most of it. I planted all those spring seeds because that's free stuff that will make me money. As it was raining, I tried to catch the shad for the community center, but all I got was broken glasses and a catfish that got away. <clears throat> I ended up getting an ancient seed without realizing it. It took me a while before I even noticed I found one. I finally noticed when I was unloading upstairs. Yeah, I didn't expect that, but it was just the start of my luck. As it was an early night, I decided again to try for the shad, but got a brem instead. Which is still something for the community center anyway. Beauty mate! Day 10, I had even more rain, so I celebrated by going fishing and finding that shad for the community center, finally. I wanted to celebrate by buying more seeds, but to my dismay, it was Wednesday, my dudes. This sums up my feelings about that. Hello darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk to you again. I wanted to make 5,000 gold for the egg festival as I wanted to buy 50 strawberry seeds, so that was something to strive for. I fished up an emerald which would help me towards this goal. With happiness, I cast towards those bubbles, but over and underestimated my strength for it. That little bubble thing lasted forever and I got plenty of fish and a ruby. After such a good day, I reached level 5 fishing. I made sure to store all those fish as I chose Fisher so I can sell them for more later. Day 11, I knew that the egg festival was close and I needed to make as much money as I could. Luckily, Robin lost her axe so that 250 gold would definitely help. I showcased my superhuman prowess by chopping up a piece of wood clearly not within my reach. I nearly forgot to get the sunfish but of course I did not forget. But what literally stunned me was that I found a complete breakfast in Gus's bin. I would give that to Alex for his birthday eventually as that is his favorite thing. I spent the rest of the day fishing and sold all those fish for a whopping 4,000 gold. That is my strawberry goal achieved. Day 12 started out amazingly. I finally adopted the lost stray dog and I named him appropriately. But when I asked my mate about it, he said he was watching it with his children. It gave them a good laugh, so mission accomplished. I returned Robin's axe and made my way to the mines. You remember me talking about luck? Yeah, that was only one episode apart. That is crazy. Also, I just made it down 30 levels, so making progress in the mines with lots of laughter. <laughs> oh my god. Day 13 was an exciting day as I trashed some kids in an egg festival. 
I also prepared the spring crops and land for 50 strawberries. So when I got home that night, I ran to the community center and completed the spring crop section, which gave me 20 speed growth. When I got home, I made sure all 50 strawberries were planted with speed growth and fertilizer. I made a specific video on the strategy, which I will link at the end of this video. Day 14 was nothing special. I dropped down five levels in the mines and expanded my furnace room. Smelt while you mine, folks. It's very efficient. Oh, I also thought about courting Haley at this point, but would soon lose interest because I would mess it up. Day 15 was salmon berry season. Before heading off, I also disclosed what my monthly goals were for the rest of the season, which you can see on the screen. The most important was to get level 80 in the mines. I gathered 30 salmon berries today and cleared some farm space when I got home. Day 16 started with even more rain, so no need to worry about watering. As I had time on my hands, I wanted to go and upgrade my axe to copper and make my first silo so I could start harvesting grass before buying animals. First silo is placed. I had a lot of items to be donated to Gunther, as you can see my chest is chockers, so it was a good day for it and to actually get the ancient seed recipe as well. Not only did I get the recipe, I got 9 melon seeds in preparation for summer, which was fantastic. I decided not to plant the ancient seed yet, as I wanted to wait until I have lightning rods, which won't be for a while. Day 17, I was preparing to do a drop off at the community center and, to my dismay, I seemed to have misplaced one of my golden parsnips. This is a friendly reminder to keep track and I had to go slightly out of my way to make sure I had another one which wouldn't be too much of a problem. I spent the day fishing before heading to the community center to actually make those donations. The community center is slowly filling up and it feels good. Before heading to bed, I decided to set up some crab pots but had some OCD problems with their placement. Yeah, that really rustled my jimmies. Luckily, 2,600 gold made me sleep better. Day 18 was another rainy day and tomorrow will be the same. It was at this point I started to think it was monsoon season as I had nothing but rain. I was almost level 5 in farming and decided to hold on to my crops for a better payoff with that level 5 tiller profession. I bought extra seeds and extra parsnips because of that previous mishap. Clearly ignoring what I just bought, drenched in rain, I gave Pam a golden parsnip for her birthday. As she engaged me in some awkward conversation about whether or not I was staying dry while we were in the rain getting soaked. With all that excitement, I most definitely forgot to pick up my copper axe and headed straight to the mines instead. As we started out, I decided 5 levels would be a good goal for the day. While trekking down, I found a winter route for the community center from a slime and did indeed get down 5 levels. I had to plant some things, so I headed out. On the way home, I had to follow tradition and wake up Linus. Oi Linus! <laughs> Poor guy, he's trying to sleep. Day 19 was a simple day and I was pleasantly surprised that my farming had hit level 5 after picking up some crops. I was ready to sell all those stored things now, after I actually select the perk. As I was running, I noticed that I could harvest all my grass now, so I can now avoid paying my soul to Marnie, as she is expensive. I redeemed myself by collecting my copper axe from Clint and got him working straight away on my copper pickaxe. No time to waste, mate. Chop, chop. With this powerful new tool, I decided to do some land clearing, which was quite satisfying. At night, I expanded my knowledge and all my crops are worth 10% more now. And apparently that wasn't enough knowledge, as that land clearing got my foraging to level 5. Now, I have a chance to get more things with Gatherer. Day 20 started with me chasing away this foul creature. After some brief exercise, I collected my entire crop field and ended up with a substantial harvest. That and all my previous crops finally went into the shipping bin. We'll get back to that shortly. A bit of extra land clearing and then I found myself an urchin on the beach, which is for the community center. I think I found a typo in the game. The wizard wants me to slaughter a dust spirit, but I thought they were called dust sprites. I attempted to buy 37 kale, but find myself disappointed as I could only afford 36. And I accidentally bankrupted myself. True story. I fished for the rest of the night, level 6 farming, and 14.6 thousand gold from all my crops. Mate. Day 21, I was alarmed to find a stranger at my door who offered to transform my farm cave. I went to the mushroom cave as I'm a hobbit and I love shrooms. I also made a video about this choice, link at the end. 
I visit the lorist, who is the wife of Morris. The reason I assume so is because her prices are so high. She has a few required fish for the speciality bundle, but I refuse to buy fish. I visit Clint and retrieve my pickaxe and try to engage the fellow in some conversation, but he brushes me off because he's a recluse and an absolute prick. After being dismissed by a blacksmith, I had to prove I still had some social skills and gave Haley her most beloved gift. She was enthralled. I started at level 40 in the mines today and found myself a crystal fruit, which is also used for the community center. After getting bullied by everything today, I decided I really needed a better weapon to fight back. I made it down to level 50 today and got some fluffy Ugg boots. Day 22 started with amazing luck by finding two perfectly fresh burgers washed up in a box on my farm. Look, I don't ask questions, maybe the Krabby Patties. With such luck, I wanted to plan a date ahead by giving Haley a golden daffodil, so I ambushed her while she was still asleep for maximum potential. But I was devastated that it didn't take her to four hearts. That beloved gift I accidentally gave her ruined the chances for that dance. But I'm not the dancing type, I'm a farmer and I proved as such by requesting all Clint mates to upgrade my axe even further. Uh, more on that soon. I mind for the rest of the night to aim for that goal of level 80 before spring is over. Again, Stardew Valley thwarted this plan by giving me a massive monster level. I really needed a better weapon. I finally conceded to the will of Stardew and bought a new weapon as I had not found anything better in the mines. Day 23 I mostly spent in the mines. The day before I was able to go down 5 levels and today I traversed another 5, almost 10 but the new weapon was definitely doing me a solid. Day 24 was supposed to be my first date, but I'm not about to stand in some corner watching everyone else dance because that's humiliating. So I went mining again, and I made it down 15 levels today, which was amazing, but not before finding another weapon which was infuriating. Stardew, why do you do this? Now at level 75, I only had 5 levels before my seasonal goal. To celebrate, I chose Miner, because I'm a miner. On day 25, I wanted to upgrade my pickaxe, but before doing so, I cleared all the rocks on my future farming area. I picked up my steel axe at the same time, and it was time to clear my farming spot from all those large stumps with the steel axe, and in preparation for summer. I wanted sprinklers, this is why I focused on my axe first. Day 26 was nothing special other than setting up a little tapper farm and a tree farm. Riveting stuff, I know. On day 27, I picked up the pickaxe and headed to the mines, as it was time to go down to level 80. Not only did I reach level 80, I got level 90 and the obsidian edge, which is a solid sword. I was jumping. Day 28 was mainly a bit of extra mining, looking for gold ore as I needed it for quality sprinklers. Day 29 was the first day of summer, and it was all about setting up the new crop field with as many sprinklers as I could. I bought the required crops for the community center and for money purposes. I was up till 1am planting and watering everything. Day 30 I created a few more sprinklers and I was nearly done with that. I then went for a forage for those summer items. This day though I didn't find any grapes which was disappointing. I went to the community center and discovered I had forgotten corn. I had a few seconds to leg it down to Pierre and I made it right on time to buy some corn. I then shamefully returned to the community center and then completed the boiler room. I wanted the minecarts for super fast travel. Day 31 started with a little search for those elusive grapes, but I would be disappointed yet again. I built another silo and followed it up with some fishing for the community center summer ocean fish. None of these were for that bundle. Oops. Day 32, I saw that it was going to be stormy tomorrow and I had not yet made any lightning rods, I really needed to get on top of that. But before I could do that, I ran into some grapes on my very own farm and was delighted. After such happiness, I wanted to share the good feelings around and decided to give Jazz a cake for her birthday. Hello, she How loved it enough but oh, decided she you wasn't supposed birthday. to talk Thank to strangers. Great. I'm not supposed to talk to strangers. All around me are familiar faces, worn out faces, worn out faces. I felt very low after that. Look, social things might not be my thing, 
To make myself feel better, I skipped the fiberglass rod and went straight to the iridium rod as I realized I had not upgraded yet. Yeah, 10 points, mate. I immediately caught a puffer fish for the community center after that and then a tuna. Another quick trip to the community center was in order, especially for the summer forage bundle. Day 33, we did indeed have that storm. I planted those summer seeds and made sure I had lightning rods. All I need to do now is plant that ancient seed. For the CC, I then caught the tilapia and also the red snapper. Make a point of catching the rain CC fish people. And with that, I also completed the ocean fish bundle. I decided to buy a massive backpack, just cause I can. And then decided to buy a coop because we will need animals for a lot of the bundles in the future. I then celebrated by going mining and making it down to level 110 and getting my space boots. Day 34, I finally planted one of those ancient seeds. That spot looked at me funny, so a sacrifice was made. Also today, for reasons, I had my old bamboo pole and I wanted to catch a largemouth bass for Pam. But to my horror, I hooked a sturgeon and engaged in a colossal struggle. I then realized this fish was for the CC, so that was a win. I celebrated by getting to the bottom of the mines, floor 120 and 34 days in a casual playthrough. Uh, nothing special, but I thought I'd mention it. Day 35 started with placing down some recycling machines. I never used these before, but they are actually really useful. Getting a lot of refined quartz saves you having to use coal for it, and you can get an item for the CC, which I'll get to later. I then went into the next phase for my mining expeditions, which was to repeat the cold levels and kill as many dust sprites as I can. Reason number one was for the coffee bean. Reason number two is getting the burglar ring as the monster reward. This becomes important later. Day 36, I wanted to buy chickens, but seeing as it, it was a Monday, it was one of those many days that Marnie is not at her desk. God damn it. Depressed, I spent most of the day fishing to make extra money for said chickens. I also quickly visited Clint to upgrade my pickaxe to gold. Hmm, day 37 was a simple one and it had one purpose. Make as much money as possible because I had some expensive season goals, which you can see here. I realized that with my recycling machines, I got a bolt of cloth, which was an item for the CC. It was a good day. I pursued my goal and caught many fish, about 6,000 gold worth. Day 38. As it was Wednesday, I was able to visit Marnie and actually buy some chickens. I love the random name generator. I picked up my golden pickaxe and will soon be ready for some mining again. Another quick CC drop off. This building is getting closer to completion. I also remembered I had a festering strawberry in my chest and decided to present it as a gift to Maru who instantly went to four hearts. Amazing. Give people the love gifts on their birthday. Also, the better quality, the more friendship points. I also got to buying my barn, so we will soon see some mammal creatures. I finished the day with some mining and hunting dust sprites. Day 39 was the luau, and I really wanted to go to this event with the best ingredient because that will raise your friendship points with everyone. But before hitting there, I did some simple land clearing. At the said festival, I tossed in a golden cauliflower, and the governor really loved it. <laughs> Everyone came a flocking. Day 40 was one to remember as I scavenged a blueberry tart out of Gus's trash. I swear, this man is keeping me alive. Wait, are these meant for Linus or um. <laughs> I tried my luck again, and I found a gold bar in the trash as well. Why am I fishing if I'm finding gold in the trash? But fishing was something I did today to make more money, as well as making 150 spring seeds apparently. The day ended with 11,000 gold or so. As it was raining again on day 41, I made a point of catching the wood skip for the community center, but all I got were catfish. God damn catfish. Remember that complete breakfast I found in the trash uh, maybe a month ago? A perfect gift for Alex's birthday today. As I was buying heaps of animals, I needed more copper ore to make all the animal product machines, so I did exactly that. Day 42, my barn was completed and I needed to fill it. I made some mayo machines, which is a step towards the big profit. The next obvious step was buying some cows for my barn, and as expected, I named them appropriately. After a quick CC drop for the summer crops, I got blocked by a Junimo. This happens often and it is rage inducing. 
the night was finished with an unsuccessful mining run. Day 43 was remembered with the birth of a few 1960 movie villains. A community member suggested I update the names of those two cows, so we had Dr. No and Mr. Wu. I also made a little pen for Benjamin so he has his own little spot to run amok. I then bought the apple and the pomegranate trees as they are the only ones I needed for the community center bundles. Day 44, my barn had been upgraded to the next level so I'll be ready for some more animals soon. I planted those two aforementioned trees in a convenient spot so Benjamin can mark his territory. I also crafted a lot of tree fertilizer and applied it to my tree farm as we will need a lot more wood for those animal building upgrades. I continued mining copper for the animal machines but was pleasantly surprised with a prismatic shard on level 22 on a bad luck day which is absolutely repulsive. Day 45 I enclosed my crop area so it looks a little bit nicer and I realized I missed a single blueberry bush. Obviously I'm slacking, don't judge. Reason for those tree farms and fertilizer was for the bigger buildings. They get expensive and we need to keep our wood supply up. I then went to buy a single duck and decided to name him Daffy Duck, as you do. It was also Goku's birthday today, or Sam, and he's the only villager that likes Jojo Cola, so a simple guy to cater to. Well, would you look at that? It's the halfway point of the challenge. Remember to hit that like button if you're enjoying the video so far, and let me know in the comments what you're enjoying. Also subscribe, maybe. Cheers, let's get back into it. Day 46 was nothing special, just working towards those goals of upgrading my barn. So it was just some resource gathering and fishing for money as those barn upgrade prices are nothing to sneeze at. Day 47 began with me realizing my deluxe coop had been completed and that meant I could finally buy a rabbit. Which is exactly what I did and I named him Roger as I was a big fan of the film Who Framed Roger Rabbit as I am a 90s kid. I then extended my human kindness by giving Demetrius a month old strawberry. <laughs> he was most impressed by this specimen. I then searched for more copper so I have enough for all those animal artisan machines. Day 48 I was planning on upgrading that barn so I did a solid wood felling session. As you can see you need a lot of resources and money for these building upgrades so there is a lot of grinding these days. Absolutely compelling stuff here. Day 49 was just a continuation of getting resources for that upgraded deluxe barn. The majority of my wood farm is ready to go and I got a considerable amount of wood. I immediately planted a new farm and fertilized all of them. I thought I saw a cave dweller at the beach, but it was just Sebastian. I spent the rest of the night fishing and made 6200 gold at the end of the night. Day 50, I woke up expecting to do more resource gathering, but to my great delight the second level barn was already good to go. This made me happy, so happy that again I had to share this jubilation. Before heading out I made a lot of foraging seeds as I wanted more money for things I will need in the near future. Wanting to share the good feeling I knew it was the dwarf's birthday today because of the wiki, but unfortunately I had not donated all the scrolls yet. So I can't speak his language, but I thought the language of love is universal, and I gave him an amethyst. Apparently not, he just took my gift and spoke gibberish at me. This stung, but not as much as finding the last dwarf scroll only 5 minutes after this that would have allowed me to speak his language. God damn it, Stardew. <gasps> is that it? Is No, you're, you're kidding me. You're absolutely joking right now. Are you... <laughs> well, at least I hit level 9 farming that night, and 15,000 gold to go with it. Day 51 was a big one because I needed to buy a deluxe barn, and also get some goats. I had about 30,000 to my name, but I wanted more. All those summer forageables were made into seeds, 186 to be exact. Money was well spent that day on a deluxe barn to get more animals and more products for the community center. Speaking of which, I made more donations to the CC afterwards in fact. Donations to the museum were also a thing today. All those summer seeds, 186 of them, were worth 10,230 gold which was massive. I then immediately spent some of that hard earned cash on two goats. I only needed one, but you know what? One is a lonely number, folks. 
more fishing followed and we hit level 10 fishing and I obviously went angler to sell my fish for more. Day 52 had a singular goal which was making money and cleaning up my farm in preparation for fall. I was happy to see I found a large white egg and a duck egg today for the community center. Fishing followed and I made myself just under 14,000 for the day. I wanted to have at least 25,000 for fall crops and time to tick in. Day 53 I was overcome with excitement as I found some wool, another item for the CC. But this excitement will soon be shot down like a fighter plane. I had that quest that Demetrius wanted a melon. Long story short, I gave the man a melon and accidentally gave him that wool as well. This is perfect, just what I was looking. <sighs> I just gave this man my bloody wool. I was mopey for the rest of the day. I took my sorrows out on many dust sprites, but also knowing that the burglar ring will eventually be my reward. Day 54, I expanded my animal product machines. I also harvested my entire forest again because I needed a house upgrade and also a stable, even though I realized the stable takes hardwood, not wood, but that was still needed as well. A quick visit to Dolores, the wife of Morris, because her prices are so high. Also, just to let you know, I have periodically looked at her wares this entire series and she has had nothing useful for me at all. No worries there, I fished again and made 17,000 for the day. Day 55 began with the decision to build my stable. Look, I got tired of running around like a pleb and I wanted to travel around like a king on horseback. I then went for a gigantic geoprocessing session with Clint. Look, he's not much of a conversationalist, in fact he's nothing at that, but he's efficient. That geode run resulted in a significant donation to the museum, and I was hoping to get pumpkin seeds and the key to the sewers from this. Day 56 was the last day of summer, and I was greeted by Gunther, who gave me the key of keys. I also collected some maple syrup for the CC, as it's required for two bundles, and finished the day with some mining. Look, I had a great time. I was playing tag with a bat whilst taunting him. <laughs> he can't touch this. Du, 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 ch, 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 ch. He can't touch this. Du, 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 ch, 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 ch. Come on, everybody. Day 57 was a big one, as it was the first of fall, and the first day of any season is always down to the T. Preparing soil, buying crops, and planting all of them. Absolutely thrilling stuff this. Day 58 was a great day because the king had received his horse. I named them appropriately of course, and I wanted to traverse the lands of Stardew Valley on a horse of no name. On a horse of no name, it felt good to be out of the rain. In the desert, you can't remember your name, cause there ain't no one for to give you no pain. I then proceeded to do a big forage to get all those full items for the community center. I then found my future wife Penny at the library, and I remembered it was her birthday. I presented her with an emerald, and she fell heads over heels for me. Day 59 was a second attempt to get all those full items as I didn't find them yesterday. I made a quick detour to Robin and placed an order to upgrade my house, which cost me a lot of wood. That won't be my only big purchase today as I decided to abduct a single pig today as well and named her appropriately. Look, I wanted that pig for the community center. I then attempted to catch a tiger trout for the community center, which I did. Day 60 started with the construction of a farm computer, so I have information on my farm. It was then a continued effort to get all of those full items. Look, sometimes it takes a while to get them all. I then did a CC donation got that animal and full forageable one done, also the exotic one. I then planted all of those full seeds to up my foraging skill. I finished with mining and checking the monster goal and seeing that I was about halfway with the dust sprite goal. Look, I wanted to get that ring as soon as possible. On day 61, while I was chopping down some wood, I thought about my goals for fall. I wanted to get the greenhouse, get the burger ring by committing dust sprite genocide, and save 42,500 gold for the bus stop. And Romance Penny. I had decided by this point that I'll forgo Leah for Penny because she's a sweetheart. I then went ahead and bought six cows because I could. I then bought four chickens and realized I bankrupted myself. Whoops. 
I gave Elliot a lobby as I felt nostalgic for my old RuneScape days from yesterdecade. And I finished the day with fishing and made 6,000 gold for the day. Day 62, I woke up and somehow my house had magically tripled in size. Funny how that works. Apparently I was moving up. I then decided to swim through an ocean of love as I was petting all of these animals. I saw that I had an ancient fruit ready to go. I think I planted that last season. I almost forgot about that. Another silo later. And then more dust sprite hunting, but not before blowing up all this copper. With so many sprites, you'd think I would have come to the wrong neighborhood. Day 63 was an embarrassing day. After engaging Penny in some great conversation about her trying to clean up after mum, I thought she went the other way and I wanted to do some garbage diving. Oh my god. I thought she was too far away. <laughs> Trust me, we can work past this. We can work past this. Yeah, not a great way to start the relationship, I must admit. To take my mind off things, I decided to go sort out my fridge with all the cook recipes and also make those two dishes for the community center, which were one fried egg and a maki roll. Well, look, making progress. It was followed with more dust sprite hunting and mining in general. Day 64, I was surprised to see that a starving homeless man had lost his only basket in which he gathers food. No wonder he's starving. I then made more mail machines as production had increased. One huge cranberry harvest later, and I then spent a good portion of the day gathering blackberries, leaving none for Linus. In fact, I made sure to give him his basket after the fact. I got sidetracked by the serenading voice of Penny that made me help her with her cleaning. My future mum in law was not happy as I had my hands on her pantaloons, which is fair. I then slaughtered a family of sprites and was rewarded with level 10 farming, solid, and level 9 foraging to boot. On day 65, it was finally a rainy day, and I needed the warm eye for the CC. But before that, I quickly headed to Marnie to buy an auto grabber because I had a surge of money yesterday because of those cranberries. Look, I don't want to keep tending to the animals, as I'm a lazy person. I caught the walleye, which was fantastic, leaving only the sandfish left for the community center fish bundles, we will get to the desert soon. I then caught a treasure chest which is worth 5,000 gold. I was elated. Day 66 began with a lot of matured animals and not enough machines in my barn. I fixed that promptly so now I have full production going on in here. I went for more blackberries and then I returned Linus's basket seeing as I won't be worried about his competition anymore. I then saw I was at 324 dust sprites out of 500 and continued the slaughter. Day 67 was nothing special. It was Jody's birthday and I planned on giving her a diamond. But to my great delight, I saw that Jody wanted a diamond from the notice board that day. What a coinky dig! I was planning on that, so it became a two for one birthday present. Day 68 was a simple day, but a bit disappointing. Again, a visit to Dolores, the wife of Morris, has resulted in unhappiness as she still didn't have a red cabbage seed. I fished my woes away for the rest of the night. Money makes the pain go away. D69 was an important day for the community center. First, I noticed I had a chunky pig now, so a truffle is only a matter of time. But a quick gift of a purple item to everyone's favorite purple-headed gal. And I make my way to the community center. A couple of donations here, but the main one was the spending of money on the vault so I can get Pam back into the workforce. I needed to get to Skull Cabin. I celebrated with more slaughter in the mines of course. And at the end of this day, I realized I had completed all of my four goals. Absolute legend mate. Day 70 was an important day. I had unlocked the bus stop but I wanted to get the burglar ring before heading to the desert. So today, four crops are done and then a countdown began in the mines. For my massacre to be completed, I needed 44 more sprites. 44 innocents later and I was to be rewarded the next time I had a chance to pick it up. To celebrate, I had to wake up Linus to share in my jubilee, but then I decided to serenade him appropriately. He thinks he can sleep, he thinks the terror, he thinks the horror that is Aramis is over. Oh, I've got a new thing to show him. Oi Linus! Awimboa, 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 Awimboa. 
In the mountains, the quiet mountains, Linus attempts to sleep. In the mountains, the quiet mountains, Linus wants to sleep. Yup, yup. <laughs> Day 71, I picked up the burglar's ring and I was very happy with this item. Not feeling guilty at all and definitely not haunted by sprite ghosts. I immediately set Pamela to work to drive me places. As I had to wait till 2pm before getting this ring, I decided to fish up a sandfish for the CC first, then followed with my first Skull Cave Splunking session. With my ring, the goal is to simply kill many purple slimes as they now have a good chance to drop Iridium Ore and Bars with this ring equipped. This is not the only benefit, as Roger at home has neglected us his foot, the serpents here drop rabbit's feet as well. But that's not all, we will find out soon enough. Day 72 had lots of good news for us. My fruit trees were finally ready. Hey, quick trip to the desert to pick up an amazing weapon, and then I visited the town fair. I angered Lewis, somehow, but was rewarded 750 star points. A little fishing later, and then I was able to buy the star drop. Good times for everyone. After the festivities, I completed the pantry section with those newly gained fruit tree items. The greenhouse was mine. And also, the fish tank got done with that final sandfish. It was a good day. Day 73 was a reward to myself to take it slightly easy. I was still disappointed at this point that Roger had not given me his foot. He has one job. To make myself feel better, I moved my greenhouse to a more appropriate spot. On this farm now, it's across the seven seas in that direction. Too far away, mate. Ah, much better. The time has come to set up the greenhouse a little bit, so I gathered some seeds and fruits that I wanted to plant in there, especially all those ancient fruit that I've been accumulating. These will be replaced with iridium sprinklers in time, but this will do for now. Ah, humble beginnings. Day 74 was marked with some generosity. Birthday gift for Marnie which she loved and a emerald for my wife to be. Then a skull cave session afterwards. The killing of many purple slimes and I found enough ore for two iridium bars. I need more though. Day 75 started with some frustration as Dolores, the wife of Morris, still doesn't have the item I'm looking for. Another trip to Skull Cavern today and I would experience an amazing amount of jubilee in mere moments. <gasps> oh my god. <gasps> oh my god. Ladies and gentlemen. Oh yes. Yes! Yes! Oh, that's so good. Oh, that is so good. <laughs> oh, ladies and gentlemen, you have no idea how excited I am right now. This moment was such a huge weight lifted off my shoulders. Dolores has been letting me down, so finding this item myself in the case was such a bounty and unexpected. At this point, I realized the only item that was giving me grief was the rabbit's foot. Roger has been withholding and I was getting frustrated with him. This day I was blessed with good luck. 24 iridium ore, 1 iridium bar, a red cabbage seed and a prismatic shard. That is a good day. Day 76 was a bit of a relaxing day for me. I wanted to deck out my greenhouse and I got the red cabbage seed and I wanted to get that planted with deluxe speed grow as well. Before doing that I planted many fruit trees in my greenhouse. It was splendid. I made sure to apply the speed grow to the red cabbage and it would be ready before winter. I spent much of the afternoon chopping down wood next, followed with a quick forage for the last day of the week. Day 77, I wanted a foot from Roger, but was to be disappointed once again. Before heading to Skull Cabin for another serpent hunt for a certain foot, I popped into Robin's to give her some cheese for her birthday. I thought I saw a vampire as well, but it was just Sebastian. As Pamela was taking me to our destination in a fried out combi, I got some inspiration. Travelling in a fried out combi, on a betrayal head full of zombie. I met a strange lady, she made me nervous, she took me in and gave me breakfast. My inspiration gave me better perception as I spotted a rare slime jelly. I forgot to mention I picked up that quest for the wizard, however, Time would not be on my side as I would soon find out. I missed the quest by maybe 10 seconds. 
repulsive. Day 78 was marked with a present to my penny. I love your penny. I replaced my crappy sprinklers for better ones in the greenhouse. A trip to Skull Cavern again looking for rabbit's feet. I would be disappointed but I did get 11 iridium ore so you win some you lose some. On day 79 I was getting frustrated as Roger had not provided me with a rabbit's foot yet. At this point the only thing we really needed for the community center was a rabbit's foot so I had to take drastic measures. Those measures were indeed buying another coop and going all out with more rabbits. But it was Tuesday. I was denied this option so I went to Skull Cavern for the day on another rabbit's foot hunt. No luck unfortunately. Day 80 was when drastic measures were taken. But before that I visited the eldest man in town and gave him a leak for his birthday. He was most pleased. Another emerald for my suite as my originality for gifts was limited. Then another coup was started to put those drastic steps into effect. But I will soon realize I was doing this for free. Literally 5 minutes later in real life I would experience the most embarrassing joyous noises I would ever have to edit into a video but here it is. <gasps> yes! 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 <laughs> oh. Oh, we got it, ladies and gentlemen. Oh my god, we got the rabbit's foot. We got the rabbit's foot. Yes. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> this marked the last item I needed to worry about for the community center. On day 81, I wanted to relax a little because I had no more nasty items for the community center to worry about. But this made my blood boil. As soon as I don't need it anymore. Absolute runt. Also, on this day, I donated a sweet gem berry to that old man in the forest. I am one with nature. There was only a few days left until winter and I literally spent the next few days chilling, sorting out the greenhouse, doing skull cave and such. Until the first day of winter as the next items I needed wouldn't show up until then. The red cabbage I donated on day 82. On day 84, that useless coop was built and I realized Roger cost me 4,000 gold. Little devil. Day 85, we had our first day of winter. I had two items left for the community center and they were winter forageables. That is one item right there. One more to go. And here is the final item I needed. I even missed it by a mile to begin with. Well done, mate. Now, initially, I thought this would be a perfect run for the community center. These last two items are only available in winter, but a quick check on the wiki states that Dolores, the wife of Morris, can in fact sell these two items, though Dolores proved to be useless in this entire challenge. To celebrate, I planted all those winter seeds for a lot of profit down the line. Day 86 was the day where I was rewarded with the community center cutscene. Four months and 30 episodes led me to this moment. I was rewarded with an amateur fight where Pierre absolutely slaughters Morris. Of course we settle this the old-fashioned way. 86 days played on Stardew Valley. 30 episodes uploaded which was over 16 hours of footage and it has all led to this video. I like this format of playing a game for X amount of time and then narrating the entire experience and if you're still here I imagine you like it as well. Cheers for joining me for this community set to challenge ladies and gentlemen. If you haven't already Drop a like, let me know what you liked about the experience and consider subscribing and I will catch you in the next video. Cheers, peace out.